Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing this series of webinars during the pandemic, and I was really thinking we'd be done by now, but with the pandemic, that is. Um, the webinars, we're planning on continuing. We're lining up our guests for April, um, and uh, I'm not sure uh, when and when I'm going back on the road. That's up in the air right now because there's several balls. Um, in, in the air juggling, but we'll figure that out. Um, just a, a little note to everybody, we have opened the free Effortless Rider workshop to anybody who wants to join. Just go to horseclass.com, look for the Effortless Rider course and join the free online workshop. I think it's four modules. Um, there's great information in there to help you with your riding. I did a webinar on Friday about rider position in relation to the horse's balance. And I have my human skeleton and my horse skeleton. And I've already gotten comments from people that that was really, really super helpful. So the Effortless Rider course is gonna give you stuff to help you be a better rider for your horse. Today, my guests are Sharon and Laura Wilsey, and they, this is number 11? 10, yeah, we've lost yeah, track. Probably. That sounds about right. <laughs> we've lost track, but we just love to get together on a regular basis. And so I've brought them back for yet another fantastic webinar to talk about horse speak, some surefoot, and anything else we ever get into, because we've already talked about bangs, flowers, weather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Done. <laughs> So, yeah. so if you don't join us live, you miss that really interesting conversation at the beginning. It's well worth watching these live just because we never know where we're going to go before I actually start them. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Sharon and Laura. So good to see you. Happy spring. Likewise. Yeah. Thank you. Happy spring. Yeah. So um, why don't you guys give us a, a brief overview of what horse speak is for someone who may not have watched these webinars before. Okay. All right. So basically, um, hi, Sharon Wilsey. I'm Sharon. We'll see. This is Laura. We'll see. And uh, I was involved in a for, for personal reasons in a deep research um, project that I initiated. And what it took me into was learning how horses use micro gestures in their body language communication with each other. So there's macro gestures and those are easy to see. They bite, they kick, they run, they flee. Like those are easy, but the micro gestures uh, that they're doing to communicate with each other and then uh, organizing that information along the lines of like what, what body part of the horse influences this part of the conversation, why? And how ultimately can we imitate it given that our bodies are set up so differently. So we have hands and they don't. And things like that. And given that we want to get along with our horses and we want them to be calm, like the biggest thing we need from our horses is to be calm and focused so they can learn, so they can be safe, so we can be safe, so, so these things can happen. Understanding how the mentor type horses in a herd help the other horses stay calm and focused was a big game. So like when you look out onto any field of horses in any given moment, most of the time they're not doing anything, they're standing still. But there's a system that they use to create that sense of well-being and harmony so that they aren't wasting energy because they're a prey animal. So what I really wanted to know was how can I imitate the leaders, the actual leaders of the herd, which are the ones that create harmony so that everyone can stay still, so they can conserve energy. So if I knew how to do that, I could get the horse to pay attention to me. I'm the most important, most interesting thing in that horse's world because I'm going to help them navigate all the trials and tribulations of the scary, you know, the scary and dangerous world out there. So that if I'm working with them, riding them or whatever I'm doing, the horse is going to ask me first instead of reacting first. And, you know, there's still horses, things are going to happen, but I've got enough communication tools at this point where regardless of the energy type of the horse or the role in the herd, which is what we're going to bring, that's what we're bringing to the show today a little bit, um, I should be able to communicate like a mentor. So in the little video that we have brought, there is a teacher, there is a mentor, and there is a guardian or protector. And there's also two little young minis that are going <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's a five-year-old Arabian who's like oh that's a lot of fun I want to get in on the games 
And then so these other um, elders of the tribe, so to speak, are trying to manage this, this intense play drive that these youngsters have, because of course a big Arabian horse could, if he kicks out at one of those little minis, they could get hurt, even though the minis are instigating it. So it's very okay. fascinating to watch them work. Before we get there, I just want to say um, that what you have done is not only do, do you... <laughs> is your kitty there? No, it's a Larson cartoon. Oh, I don't think I can see it. Oh, there we are. Larson okay. Uh, hang on, I'll unshare my uh, my my screen so you can, I think this is appropriate for this webinar. I'll just unshare my background screen for a minute here, and then you can see it. Um, but what what you had mentioned failed to mention there, Sharon, is that you've managed to decode and encode. Car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Yes, that's perfect. The, the old Larson cartoons. Um, uh, if anybody remembers Gary Larson, and he's yeah. back. Did you know he's back? He's back. Oh. oh, he's back. He's back because he found an iPad pen that he can doodle on his iPad as opposed to actually pen and paper. And so he is back. Um, wow. Stay tuned. Wow. Gary Larson, I think, had has the best handle on animals um, of any cartoonist on the planet. Um, and now I can't find my screen share, so we'll just stay like this. Okay, now, so you've managed to decode and encode that, meaning to recognize what they're saying, put it into a language that we can mimic, and then we can do with our horses so that they relate to us in their language. Yes. Yes. Okay. And we created a language to talk about the language. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> because as people, we have to know what we're talking about. So we've had to come up with all these buzzwords and terminologies so that it's a framework so the because horse language is a nonverbal, right? So so that's you know that's one of the things our editor said recently. He was like, "She's like, you've invented two languages. <laughs> <laughs> there's horse speak, and then there's like horse speaking." <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so now I have a question for you um, because you've talked about the herd wanting to be. Um, you know, basically safe and quiet and everything. But I, I have a personal question. There are three horses in my herd, Al, Dunny, and, and Joyce's horse, Kid. And every day I take the three of them out of the barn. And every day when I put them in the paddock, she has to pin her ears and gripe at the one next to her, usually on the right, every mm -hmm. single day. Is this just a grumpy mare? No, she's establishing the herd rules the moment things, the moment they're together. So if they're in their stalls, I'm assuming they're put away for the night. Yes. No, just they come in to eat and then they go back out. Okay. So they're out most of the time. 100%. So when they come in to eat, so that will, so if she's grimacing over food, is that what you're describing? No, they've eaten. I put they're their halters on. I lead everybody out to the paddock. We do this every day. We okay. make the corner and then I proceed to take halters off and, and she yeah. must make an ugly face. Right. Every stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. So basically she's like, okay, it's back on. So I call any environment that a horse lives in, I just call it the chessboard because they don't, you know, we, we cannot relate to a chessboard. So I just call it that so people can think like, oh, every horse has their sort of square of reality that they're living on, right? And there's bubbles of personal space between them. So when game on, right? So as soon as they're all loose together, you know, what if she twisted her ankle on the way to the paddock and she was limping when she got there, she'd be in a different framework. She would be a different member in that herd because she'd be injured. So every single time they're gonna be turned loose together, she's gonna to say, I'm not injured, I'm perfectly fine, get out of here. So that's <laughs> because, you know, because you'll see it, like uh, you'll see when a horse goes down and that the, the herd dynamics change to deal with and cope with a mentor lying down. Like when we were around the wild horses in Germany, when there were the, the matriarchs of the herd were lying down, none, nobody else in the herd was eating. They all stood in a, what I call a hold position and they just stood around her while she slept. So it's sort of like the guardians around her, but also like, we're not gonna stray and go do weird stuff so she can actually sleep. So that, the, the, the horses who hold um, more responsibility also have a higher rank. And she's got, that mare has a responsibility of saying, you know, I've got the higher rank and letting everybody know I'm here, here's my crabby face and don't, don't you forget it. And, and mares are kind of like that because in, in nature they are, it's a matriarchy. So they're very 
sort of henpecky about who's in what role and making sure that you know about it. But they tend to just do a display and then move on. Whereas yes, it's every it's every day. And so sometimes I'll take her out by herself. Sometimes I'll take her out with one. Sometimes I take all three. It depends on who finishes eating when. But it's like every day. <laughs> She makes this face every day. It's like, I think they know. I think they know who you are. But they have to do it every day because of the gopher hole effect. So any moment that she steps in a gopher hole, gets stung by a bee, doesn't feel well, has a fever, any moment that she's off, that the, the, games, the games going on the chessboard are going to be different. So for them, it's not um, like, oh, generalization. Like I know who you are generalization for them. It's a moment to moment to moment reality. Is it at the same horse? Typically. So yeah. you, you could try. Yeah. But she would not do that to Al, really. So, so you could try like snapping your finger and pointing at the horse in question and be like, don't look at my horse. For her. For her. Because oh. see, we usually think to stop the horse from doing it. But there she's doing it at another horse where she's saying, don't look at me, don't give me those eyes. So if you look at the other horse and say, don't look at her, it's hysterical as mm -hmm. well. Because the horse that you're telling, don't look at my horse, they look at you like, fine. <laughs> and then the horse you protected usually looks at you and goes, thanks for taking the load off my shoulders. Because then you could take it to the next level of yelling at that horse and putting your whole hand up toward that mayor and being like, I've got you, I've that got horse you. is not gonna get you. And just totally calm and zero and-, and That yeah. is how easy it is to insert yourself as highest in the peck. As order. the protector. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we used to have two mayors in that herd. Blondie was the mayor and oh. Kid always wanted to be the mayor, but of course Blondie was in charge. And when we pulled Blondie out, she started to becoming the assertive mayor to the two geldings. And, um, but I, I never think of her as like an effective or kind leader. She's just a grumpy. Well, it's two, is it two geldings? It's two geldings. It's Al who's, who's like, he's, he's the ground, he's the earth. He's the one who just is the solid individual, right? And then the other one, which one of these days we're gonna talk about him, Dunny, because he's unique. <laughs> um, Dunny, uh, how do I put Dunny? He's, he's like, he's earth, but he's always come with, with his other agenda um, and always has, you have very clearly have to set his boundaries. Very, very clearly. Not like a joker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably Not maybe. Like a joker. And, and you might have like, Sometimes you'll have combos, you know, sometimes you have a horse that's so pure, you're like easy, it's easy to tell. And oh. there's other ones that are sort of slippery. And sometimes you'll have one, if he has these other qualities where he can be really grounded. And, um, a lot of times I'll notice that there's a, a, a horse that's a prince or a princess and a joker. So they have these moments where they can really show up. And usually and, they're very, like a very good looking horse. Yes. Oh, Dunny's very, he's, he's a buckskin with long mane and tail. Well, yeah. um, he's the one I clipped the chest and then he was like, oh, I am such a yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Dude. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's oh, like, I was going to show you that video. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she's saying, you're not that much of a prince to me. No. I know that you're just a silly joker. Get out of here. Now d describe the joker a little more because that's, that's. So you uh, know the horse, the, the ones who are just marvelous at opening any lock, you can't keep them in. They crawl out of windows if they need to. They they mm. go and eat the dog food. They typically a space you know, they invader. Just, <laughs> space in, they're just ridiculous. They'll crawl into the kiddie pool. They'll come into your house. You know, they're just like showing up at the window. Hi, and but they're so friendly and so affectionate. But when you if you try to train them, it's like they can't take anything seriously and they have a hard time. They go, why are we? I don't want. I, everything should be play. So they're pure joker is usually um, kind of tugs at your heart. Like you, people really like them, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be really hard to get any, what we would consider work out of because they just want to play. So a lot of times they're, they're really good at um, like as endurance horses because they're like, yeah, let's, yeah, what's over the next hill? Yeah, let's go, go, go. But you know, you, I want you to work in a collected frame in a riding ring and they're like, I want to shoot myself in the eye. You know, like they don't want to, do anything like that because they're they're just like effervescent and bubbly and and so um that type of horse needs a lot of boundaries 
but they don't want any boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so what they want is to have fun, to be affectionate. So unfortunately, people are very attracted to them, but they can get a little bit beat up sometimes because people are like, I want you to be in your place or it, people, they're bubble poppers because they're like, ah, sniff, 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 I'm so cute. Oh yes, he's a bubble popper for sure. Yeah, yeah. He has to and touch everything with his nose. He, he yeah. like, stop touching me. Yeah. <laughs> but then on the other hand, what people typically do is, but you're cute. Oh no, I don't do the but you're cute with him. That's good, well, that's good. good. <laughs> yeah, the wishy-washy thing, especially with a joker, is like the it's, worst it's, thing. It's the right, worst. So let me screen share this because I, I did find the video, which I, I had meant to talk to you about a while ago when I clipped yeah. him and you were telling me how interesting this was. And here's here he is with his new blanket. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Remember? Joker <laughs> friends. Okay, so this is this is Joyce's horse kid. She's 24. She's the one who's the grumpy, right? Mm -hmm. Here's Dunny with his new blanket, thinking he's uh -huh. handsome, and of course, Al, right? Yeah. So um, let's see, one of these is a video. Let me just see which one's the video. Well, she is just trying to deal with the shenanigans of these two gentlemen. And so or that's his, of well, and probably Dunny 100% if Al yeah. is like the mentor kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, she's just like, no, Dunny, yet yeah. again, no. So. <laughs> It looks like she's being grumpy, but he's the reason she's being yeah. grumpy. Like, he's the instigator. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, there's that that look. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so they look at boundaries as a puzzle to solve. How do I pop this bubble that you seem to be wanting to project? <laughs> ah, yes. And he does that with Al. I, like um, on a more recent video, they all came back from the waterer and, you know, Dunny went up to Al and kicked up his heels at him and tried to get an Al's like, I, seriously, dude. Um, but she's so curious here because he's changed blankets, right? She's never seen him in a blanket. He's never worn a blanket before. Um, and you can see everybody's working on the hay. Um, yeah. Let me see. I think the other video having she not is in a hold position and has to do very little effort to tell him to not come into her bubble. See there, all she had to do was that oomph to get him to back up. And she wanted to make sure he'd back up before she puts her head in. Mm -hmm. So that's, she has to check and double check and double check before she does anything. Because if the moment that she doesn't check with him, he's going to pop the bubble. And she's uh. like, I ain't putting my head in here and have you come after me at my butt while my head is in And here. he went away with his head down like that, like a scolded little boy. <laughs> and all she did was pin her ears and right. just take over his spot. And he's like, oh my goodness, you just yelled at me. Right. <laughs> yes, and we always, we have to yell at him a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. So here he comes back, he went off and now he's gonna come back. And you can see he's cute as a button, right? We're actually, we're frozen, frozen on our side. Uh oh, yeah, hang on. Uh, wait, I'll, uh, let me just start it again. There we go. There we go. Is that better now? Yeah. yeah. But like I said, he's cute as a button, but he's, he's um, you wouldn't believe how old he is that you have to just keep reminding him of where his space is. <laughs> And so what's nice here is that Al and um, what's her name? Kid. Kid. Al and Kid actually work together, kind of like mom and pop. Mm -hmm. No, too. They're very respectful of each other's spaces. I mean, she walked right behind Al and he didn't take any offense by that because she's just saying, I need to, I need to have this space. They basically have to have like north and south so he can have east and west because they're not, no one wants to eat next to him. Well, they're sandwiching him now. Yeah, and they're sandwiching him. So he's technically in the middle of mom and pop so that he can settle. So they can both say something to him on either side on either of the side. dinner table. <laughs> That's right. And yes. he blinks, right? So he's blinking here, the <laughs> yeah. tail is lowered, the head is lowered. And so he's, this is the type of horse who doesn't know that they need to be guardianed from both sides, but they really need to be guardian from both sides. Okay, that, that makes sense actually. Um, because he's, he's rather unique, this guy, in that he, the normal, like, Al, you make any kind of like, hey, and he's like, ah, I'm so sorry. And Jenny's like, huh? <laughs> you talking to me? Oh. Yeah. And um, so it, it's been a challenge because, and then he, um, like, uh, 
you know, the, the vet came to do radiographs of his feet. And so what he does, he goes back to, I can't pick up my feet. You can't have my feet. I won't give you my feet. It's like. <laughs> so for him, it would be, um, we actually just learned that a friend of ours who is a professional in the horse world, she, she provides um, uh, dental work and body work for horses. And she said that to simplify things at some of the barns that she goes to, where she's like, I can't, I can't get into it. I can't get into all the philosophy and blah, blah, blah. I just want them to do the thing that she's been saying, imagine that you're a gatekeeper. Just imagine that you're, 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 your hands up, you're a gatekeeper. And the more up the horses, you're up too. And when they start to drop, you start to drop too. Mm -hmm. And so then you're on standby. Okay, I'm on standby, but I'm here. I'm your gatekeeper. And it's not against the horse mm -hmm. or the horse against the world. So you're just saying, I've got it. I'm gatekeeper. I'm on it. And a horse like Denny is going to need gatekeeper in front and gatekeeper in back, both sides. So if you stood in front of him, I got it. Okay, sentry, nothing's going to come from the front. Okay, I got you from behind. Okay, nothing's going to get you from behind. Then you look at the horse. Are you ready to be in the center of my sandwich, which is what the two horses are doing? Uh -huh, okay. And when they do sentry front and sentry back, he's like, okay, now I can, now I can, can settle. I can settle. In. Yeah. Cause that's, it looks like that's probably how they eat a lot. Yeah. Is him in the middle. And so they had to situate themselves and she had to get familiar with his blanket and all that till they could settle into mom and dad and child in the middle. <laughs> really. And, and, and Al is such the dad. He is just like, you know, okay, everything's under control here. Keep the peace. You know, yeah. it's, it's really fun. Yes. And he is cute as a button. And so, you know, he, um, he gets, he, he, everybody goes, oh, he's so adorable, but nobody has, gets to deal with him because <laughs> he's not. Yeah, it's a constant, you basically would need to have your hold hands up all the time. You have to be ready. Ready and expect it. If he's going to, if you know he's going to come in in three seconds, have your hold hand up at two, getting ready for a finger to a prong hand to be like, nope, stay in your lane. Yep. You cannot cross this, is this imaginary line. glass wall all the time. Or like, you're driving down the road there's a line in the road right and you're not supposed to cross the line unless you put on your blinker so with horses it's the same thing it's like there's a line don't cross the line unless there's a blinker and i've said you can cross the line or if we're moving and i'm moving you over to to a new place and but then there's a new line in the new place so we're basically for us because we're we're vertical we don't think that way unless we're in a car which is horizontal so in your car, you really get it about the car in front of you, the car behind you, the car next to you, if you're on a highway, like all of a sudden the bubbles of personal space really matter because you're moving at speed. You don't want to bump into anybody. That's actually a great analogy because in a car we are longer and we are more rectangular. Yeah, um, yeah. And we do have very special rules because otherwise bad things happen. Right? Yeah, and how many times have you felt that person speeding up behind you and stopping really late and you're like oh my goodness and you like start creeping forward because you feel you're afraid that you're going to get rear-ended and it's not because you saw them in the rear view it's because you feel it feel it yeah. Yeah. yeah and you say things like stop crawling up my butt and it's like it's not your butt it's a car <laughs> <laughs> but it's true we use the same words don't we yeah yeah that's fascinating that's i'll have to think about that more well, that's yeah. very helpful because Dunny is a special boy. Um, he requires constant vigilance. Um, and, and the other, I think the others are just used to it. They're just like, no, no. <laughs> you know. Well, that's a great lead into what we would like to show the group and those who are in our club, they did see this last week. Oh, yeah, I have to, uh, can you give me some permission? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yep. No uh, we did have this as a featured video. One of our club members uh, sent this in. And one of the things I did, uh, Janella said, yes, they appreciate when we notice their communications, right? Yes, absolutely. Like we were talking about earlier with that mayor saying, I'll protect you, Dunny, you go away, sir. You know, don't look at my horse, all that kind of stuff. Cause you, you're taking over for her. So she doesn't have to work so hard. Cause she's basically working all day. All day. With them. <laughs> She's like, could you babysit Wendy? Yeah. Could you just <laughs> but you know, when I take him out, she hollers. She's the one who hollers for him when I take him out. Well, yeah, because yeah. she's his she's his protector. So mm -hmm. she's like, oh my God, what's gonna happen?
to happen to Denny if I'm not there? Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, because it's like, why are you, when I take both out, I get it. But when I take him out, why are you hollering at him? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you took the baby. And so <laughs> that happens with us too. When we yeah. take Luna, who's our, she's our princess joker. When we take her out, Rocky will holler for her because mm -hmm. he's like, oh my God, what's happening to Luna? I'm not there to make sure because she's, because he knows Luna can get into all kinds of problems mm. without his guidance. And when, if any other mayor gets out of the pen and is wandering around, he's like, they got it. It's fine. If Luna gets out, he gets out. Oh, he won't leave her alone. Okay. Because he's like, who knows what that one's going to yeah. get into. That's trouble. So that's, and again, if you say to her, I've got him, if you're doing just, just think gatekeeper, right? Give her a gatekeeper message, give him a gatekeeper message. So when you're leaving, you can also do a tail swish at her to say, you're all done for now. You don't have to worry about him. And she might still be a little concerned, but you've said to him, and then if she's watching and she sees him come back nice and calm, she might be like, well, Wendy, you're, you've, you're a pretty good babysitter now, I'll pay you. <laughs> you're working for free all this time <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so this guy here where's my pointy he is the one he's five this it's arabian arabian he's like a, gelding like a dun i don't know what this color is you he's gonna be gray he's uh he's gonna gray right out yeah so he, he's just in that in between yes a mare she i believe was about um she's 19 ish <laughs> she's in her te higher teens most of these horses are elders. Um, so we'll just start playing. Wait, 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 hold on a second. We'll I want to show. notice before anything happens that she's squared up in the front, mm -hmm. right? She's, she's heavy, she's present, her ears, her eyes, her nose. When horses are drawing close to check in with each other, because they, they don't need to do a full greeting ritual because they're already there. But he's going to check in with her for whatever reason. We don't know what happened before this. But for some reason, she's calling him. She's like, you need to come check in with me. And he's moving in. I want you to notice that he's pretty low, what I call a low O. So his head's not high up in the air. It's pretty in a relaxed frame. And that's how mentors and elders prefer to have the greeting happen. Like, let's be quiet about this. Let's be respectful. And But he is coming in kind of strong in that he's he's moving. He's trucking to get there. And she's looking at him like, really? <laughs> so, so I don't know what happened before and why she called him. This is called a beckoning expression. I don't know why she called him in, but he's coming and we'll see what happens when he gets there. There, stop. So at that moment, she, he, instead of coming in and doing a green checking in with her, he went right to the side of her cheek. And that's a motion that says, I want to move you. So he went to the side of her cheek, which is the first, it's like the blinker. So that's like, can you move? Can you get out of my way? So she had to raise that one level and go squeal and strike. No. <laughs> so that's what that was. Now, I'm not sure we've seen this squeal and strike yet, or if we did, it was a little bit broken up. Can you just okay. take it back again? Back I again. did not, I don't have the sound. Yes, that's fine. Okay. But we should be able to see the foot. Yeah. yeah. So can you see it now? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure. She's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're and, not. And so when we start playing again, you'll notice that there's going to be a tail swish from the gray guy. And then there's the white horse is coming up behind. So he's tail swishing at the white horse coming in from the left side of the screen in just a second. There. Oh so yeah. Stop. Oh yeah. Right. So because that, that, that horse going... moves him off. That's right. right. Because the white horse came in and said, yeah, no, you're not moving her. So these are two elders. They're both old. And she's got, she's got her role, in, which you'll see more in a minute. And this white horse has his role. And what I like to call his role is the teacher. Because unlike her, I call her role more of the mentor. She doesn't move around much. She sort of mentors emotionally, like keeping everyone in their place. The teacher type horses like to give the youngsters something to do. So they're like, let's move left, let's move right, let's go here, let's go, let's practice some of these things, let's keep this going. But it's from a perspective of, of coaching. So we'll watch the white horse do that. 
So he drops his nose. So the white horse says, that's pretty good right there. You dropped your nose. Let's get in harmony together. He drops his nose again. These are all signs to say, I'll lower, stop, stop. Those are all signs to say, I'll lower the intensity, which allows the little... <laughs> mini, back that up just a little bit because now the mini's uh, are That allows the little mini, the two-year-old mini to sneak in there and go... <laughs> So just when the mom and pop here have this Arabian quieter, putting his nose down on an object, you know, go to your corner, be, be polite. The mini is like, ah, and that's it. Like he, he can't, he's got to, he's got to go. He's got to run. Okay. So just take it forward a little bit right there. We he's can see the mini's come. legs behind the, between the gray horse and the white horse. Correct. Right. I'm going to go in slow motion right now. So it, um, it'll catch up. So you guys can see it. Oh, and there's two. Okay. Yes, it's two. Going in opposite directions. Yes. I think they're twins. So right here, this is where now you have the mentor mare, the black mare coming in. So horses will use objects like this as a focal point. And when they go there and drop their nose and take a breath, they're saying, this is a safe place. So I call them the, just a safety object. Sometimes they'll use poop for the same reason. So they got him to go to the safety place, put your nose down, take a breath, whatever. She's on one side, dad's on the other side. And then got the, the sandwich concept, the again. sandwich concept again. And then the little guy, he just goes, Meow! and that is where the Arabian says, yeah, I, I got to go play with that. I can't resist. <laughs> so he basically makes an escape route for the Arabian. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, the, and it's woohoo. And the Arabian's not being nasty or mean. He's just being playful. Young, young and playful. So nice what's interesting is there. <laughs> the yeah. mom and the teacher both stay at the safety object. They both put their nose down. There's nothing there. They're just literally doing this action. This message says everybody needs to calm down. So as horses move in circles. So when they come back around the circle, then these two are there holding down the safety object. And so there's another leader, he's gonna come in. He's a, another mini and there he is. He's like, I got it. So it's kind of oh, like- one here with the face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got, it. it's like they're playing soccer with it's these- a ping pong match. Ping pong match <laughs> with the babies. <laughs> And so now we have all the characters have now been seen. Except so, what's the paint horse? We don't know what that one is yet. The paint, He's, yes. The paint I call a peacemaker because he doesn't move. Oh, okay. Peacemakers just don't, they don't want to get involved. They don't want to, they make peace because they don't bother anybody. And I call them like chewing popcorn. They like to watch the show. They're just kind of hanging out. They don't really want to do anything except that if a horse goes near them, they're like, sure, you can hang out with me. But, but they're not getting involved like the other leaders are. So we'll watch this. And then also there's one more, the chest, there's a oh, chestnut yeah. over here who basically through this whole clip is staring out of the arena, doesn't want anything to do with this situation. And so we would call him more of a, a pawn. So all these roles in the herd, we do talk about in our webinars, as well as the new book that's coming out shortly. Um, so yeah, I'm but gonna But this keep, video is just it so, has, it's amazing. so rich. So okay. I'm going to keep going in slow motion. P-O-N-D? Did I get that no, right? Pond, like, pond. like on the chess board. Chess board. Oh, pawn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The New England version. Yeah. Yes. So here, what's interesting, stop right there. The, I call this guy the protector because he comes right in from the rear. And protectors tend to be a rear guard. So this mini protector comes in from the rear. And you can't see him, but by the look on the Arabian, he's targeted the hind end of this Arabian. And he's like, stop right there, which he does. <laughs> Pull over. Pull over. <laughs> I'm pulling this field over. <laughs> You're under arrest. You're yeah. under arrest. And he comes right in to the hind end, which is well, he does. And the Arabian doesn't move. No, nope. don't move. Right? And so he's like, okay, I got you. Now, when he comes in, he gives a specific message as the camera moves around. Go ahead. Well, I was wanted to also comment, actually, the Peacemaker paint is pinning, like very concentrating ears towards those babies saying, you do not go over there. You're right. all you're thinking about it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping the peace. So what's really neat is that this, uh, this protector guy, 
when you can get the camera around to kind of see where he's at, he's been sniffing the sit button, which the back of the rump. And then he had brought his eye there and his nose there to the jump up button and he drops his head. So that button, the jump up is the back of here. It, like when a baby's going under to suckle on their mother or a, a breeding stallion and mare are kind of sniffing each other or sometimes friend horses, they'll slide under that it's near the groin and it's a very vulnerable spot. And so it talks about being vulnerable, um, being insecure, things like that. And when he sniffs him there, it's this this button right here. And the sit is over here. Sit is sit is back here on the back of the rump. This is the vulnerability button. When he sniffs the vulnerability button, the Arabian just drops his head. Because the protector's like, I'm your protector. You need me. And the Arabian's like, I do. <laughs> I, I do. It's true. So that's the cue for the teacher to come back, pick up his student and go start doing something else. So I, I find this so fascinating that this little guy has so much control over this Arab. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, we actually just, um, one of our students um, was traveling and where she was, there was three shires and a mini donkey. And the mini donkey ruled the three shires. Like the donkey ruled the roost. So yeah, it's amazing how these little guys can have such a great effect over the uh, bigger, the bigger horses. equines. So this is neat. When he comes in, there's there's your greet. Stop. Yeah. There's your greeting. Now the the he's come in at an angle because he's gonna he's this is this is very precise. It's almost like they're doing geometry. He's he's going to change the angle of movement, which is why he's come in to greet him at this angle because he's gonna bring him away from this area. That's what the teacher is going to do. So first he's greeting. So this is like my knuckle, like, okay, are we okay? Are you all right? Are we okay? I'm okay. You're okay. That's what he's doing. And then he does this quick little thing with his nose where he slides up to the bridge of the nose. And that's a specific message. Often you'll see males do this message. And the bridge of the nose is so, as you know, from skeletons, it's so sensitive. It affects the entire skeleton. So when they give this message, they're saying, basically, calm down. So this, all these little tiny bones, this, well, there's one little tiny yep. skinny bone right here. So when a horse does that there, it's very delicate, very sensitive. And they use it often for a nurturing message, but they will sometimes, male to male, use it as a, like a coach putting his hand, you know, on a team player saying, you need to settle down. Like, so watch him do it. <clears throat> there. You see it? Yep, and the Arab's not sure he wants to accept that, it looks That's like. That's right. He's kind of like, I don't oh. move my face over here. <laughs> <laughs> so he does it again. He sniffs his nose and he bumps him again. And he's cutting him off with his chest. And, and the other Arab guy's just holding him there for the teacher. Like, That's right. Holding. <laughs> and then finally, he backs up and concedes the space to the teacher. But he can't back into that, that other leader. So he's like, whoa, beep, 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 has to figure out how he's gonna. So then the mini takes his, stop for a second. You notice the first thing the mini did was move his head away. So that's yeah. his way of saying, yes, mm -hmm. good job. And then he brings his head back, his nose back to give him another message on the girth button. Okay, now play. So there he sniffs the girth button. And that's like, we're all a team. We're all a herd. You have to stick with, what we're telling you to do, basically. So you just don't want him running around with the minis. That was a great one step. That was. That great, he took one big step into- The white horse. Yeah. Right. And watch the effect it has there. Yeah, backs him right up. Backs mm -hmm. him right up. So this is how, we can mimic all this stuff with our body language, with our feet, with the angle of approach. And here he's doing cheek, neck, shoulder, and one fell swoop, because think of, uh, think of leverage. Yep. So he, they were doing just face messages, which is not about moving your feet. It's just about give, taking and giving space. But when you get the neck involved and then you get the shoulder involved, that's huge leverage. Now you got your, your herd movement process. So that's like a big blinker going, you are going to turn that way now. So, no so just because the Arab was not accepting of the bridge of the nose, 
So he's like, I got to tell you louder. I got to tell you a little louder. Yep. And there he goes. But then it's done. All done. And that's what we have a hard time with is like, okay, we did it. We're done now. We tend to drill and drill and drill. So now they walk off together, the protectors in the back, because that's his role. The teacher's matching steps with the student. He's like, yes, yes. So he goes from almost a little bit of a reprimand to like, okay, now we're together. And then he's driving him away <laughs> from everybody else. And this is fascinating because he really gets into the driving message. And he's like, you need, so it, it, my way of interpreting that would be like, you need to listen to me. You can't. Well, what was fascinating was he made certain that the Arab couldn't go to the black mayor. Yes. yes. Like you, you don't get to go over there and be with a mentor and hang out and have something nice. You That's were right. mean to her. <laughs> yeah. And, and she was pinning her ears as well, being yep. like, don't even, don't even. <laughs> and I love how the minis moved. They were like, oh, we're out of here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the babies don't, they don't take on the, the teacher at all. No. Nope. And so now he gets him to spin around and this is really neat because he goes for the sit button and that's a, a little bit higher and then he goes lower. And so he's nibbling him in the sit button which is saying sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. And you can see him rebalance his hind end, right? So that's, stop for a second. So you know this, Wendy, you're, you've taught me so much about anatomy. When the joint, the stifle joint buckles and and folds so that they can either lie down they can get down to the ground or they can get back up again yep. so creating that buckling motion in the sit the back of the stifle joint is what creates that sitting effect and psychologically a horse uses that to say sit down stop running <laughs> be chill so he gives, look at the ears. The ears are perky on the teacher. He's like, you got it? You got it? Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. And the Arab's like, I won't, I won't move. He's concentrating about I, this. He's concentrating. I won't move. I won't kick. I won't. Because if he kicked out at this moment, that teacher is right there. He's like, I got, I'm going to take a chance. And the protector would probably come over too. Right. If there was another. Escort. Now, meanwhile. All the minis are moving over here. That's <laughs> what I was going to say. Meanwhile, the mentor mama has continued to say, this is a safe place. This is a calm place. This is a nice place. <laughs> and so the, the little baby minis are like, okay, we'll come to the nice place. And so she's like, come on over here, children. So, <laughs> and the protector's like watching the whole thing. Okay. So they come in and they're like, it's a nice place. It's a safe place. Now look what the protector does. He touches his own hip because that's his role. I drive the hips. I am the protector. Meanwhile, the teacher is doing sit down, sit down, sit down. And the mother's going, look, babies, it's quiet. It's nice. So, so she's when gonna saying uh, like, y'all want to just visit over here. You don't want to be that one over there getting reprimanded. <laughs> That's right. Yes, indeed. So finally, the Arab puts his nose down and he's just like, okay, I'll, I'll drop it. And meanwhile, chewing popcorn over here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want anything to do with that. Thank you. <laughs> you guys can deal. So now he he says to the mom, because the mom's like, I don't want him coming over here. The the teacher is like, he's not. Don't yell at me. I've got this. So that, that's just a little moment between them. Right? So the Arab's like doing a tail swish. Like, I don't want her yelling at me. The teacher's back on it. He's making sure that the Arab is listening to his directions. He's steering from behind. And he comes and he lines up with him. And this is a neat moment, stop right there, because the Arab goes into what I call the, the sentry position where he's like the lookout. And I think that I've seen horses do this a lot with this type of sort of joker. And I think they do it to be like, the reason you have to listen to me is because we have to look out. You're being distracting. Like, you're not letting me check for tigers here, buddy, right? So he's like, see, we have to look for tigers. And you'll see what the Arab has to say about that. He bumps him backwards. The Arab says, I'd rather play and leaves. <laughs> Let's do regular yeah, speed. Just do regular speed. Can you see it okay? 
Okay. So, so it seems as if the Arab, uh oh. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> not getting the message, and everybody's going to hang up on him. <laughs> yeah. And there comes the protector. I can't believe you even thought about that. Mother and protector all lined up. He's being the sentry. You need to pay attention to that. He goes right to the girth button again. You need to be a team. He drops his head so he can communicate. He does cheek. You have to listen. But he's really like he pins his ears and he means it, but he's actually really gentle to him. He's really gentle and, you know, he, but it's clearly not play. Right. And then this, it's crazy. So then this baby's coming over and the protector's like, no, <laughs> you're not coming over here right now. Oops. Might be. Oops. Sorry. So he and checks in with the picks baby. up the Arab again. Yep. Yep. So now the protector has baby duty. And there. he sit down. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. All right. So how about I bring you over here? Yeah. And now this the protector is really getting after that baby. You can't be here. You must move that way. Mama stepped in. She's like, I'm the barrier. Move him around. I got it. Put him back in position. It's just amazing how much is going on. Yeah. And but this Arab just doesn't want to get the message. No. <laughs> And neither do the babies. Yeah. Like, look at, ha ha. And there comes the protector <laughs> again. And the mama, don't even, oh, would you just, come on. Oh. So he has to really get loud. He has to really get loud. Mm -hmm. Now the teacher goes over there. Now this is neat, stop here. This is a neat moment. The teacher went to that tree and he made it a safety object because he dropped his head. He said, I'm gonna, I'm taking a break. The the mama, mentor, and the protector start grooming each other. We're gonna take a break. So they're like dropping the subject for a minute. It's kind of like recess. Okay. And they're like, have at it. I did the right thing. I went to the safety object. See, I'm right here. I'm over here. I've got my head low. Hey, oh, wow. <laughs> And there's a protector driving protector. away. Yep. The yep. Arab. And there's a teacher. What are you doing? Getting these guys. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> well, he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so funny. That is it. That yep. is the whole family wow. shenanigan. Isn't that funny? That is so funny because it's like uh it is it's an entire conversation and it's it's uh it, it's fascinating to see how much the arab just doesn't want no i will not succumb i will not I, i'm still, how old is that arab five. five yes i was gonna say that looks like a five-year-old where yeah. you know a puberty, i'm over. starting to challenge my elders maybe i don't really need to do what they tell me <laughs> That's Absolutely. hysterical. Yeah, and the baby, the mini twins are about two. So it's yeah. like the three kids are causing the uh, the ruckus of the whole thing. And it's just fascinating to watch how all these different roles are trying to containerize these behaviors. And uh, the kids won at the end. They all lined up and started <laughs> running toward the, <laughs> the camera. Now, the popcorn eater is over there. You have two different types of popcorn eaters. Right. right? You got the one that's actually observing everything, kind of like Kind of like a wall. I'm opposed. I'm just opposed. I'm just gonna. And they don't interact with that one at all either. Nope. Nope. And it. And so, what is that one? So the 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 paint one I call a peacemaker because he's engaged, but he's not gonna do anything. And the one who can't even look, I call that one the pawn because he's like, I got no power. I have no control. I can't do anything. The the peacemaker can pin his ears from time to time or kind of make a suggestion. And if a horse comes over, they can kind of group, you know, buddy up with him. But the one who's like, I, I am low man on the totem pole as far as these dynamics go, I can't deal with them at all. And by taking his head out of the game, nobody's even asking him to do anything. Yeah, they don't even, they, he's like invisible. Yeah. 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 So fascinating. And so um, the, I, I, I would love to see it continue another version of this story. Whoever filmed that, whoever place that is, it would be really fun to see 
uh, sort of a, a series of how these guys interact because clearly everybody ultimately has to get this Arab to play the game of be peaceful, be quiet and serene. But the, it's such a, um, uh, there's, there's so many strong, distinct personalities that really illustrates what you guys are talking about so clearly. Yes. We were like gold mine. Yeah, this was, we were <laughs> so know, grateful. You get, you get that piece of film and you're just like, oh my God, this is it. Yeah. yeah. That's the great thing about the club that we have on. We have two hour Tuesdays. We meet every Tuesday uh, with our club members and we ask our club members to participate. So our club members are the stars. They send in these videos and then we just spend the like two hours. Did. Yeah, we spend two yeah, hours, cool. whether it's her cool. dynamic stuff like this or our club members will be with their horse right. and we give them direct coaching as we watch the video. So it's been really fascinating. We started in June, one of these, um, you know, silver linings to COVID, we created this online club so we could reach our fans and, um, you know, still have some one-on-one -on -one connection with people. So but brilliant. but yeah. I thought it might be interesting for you because it ran through my mind even when I was watching it the first time um, is how the the horses that are the the leaders have this crazy intense grounded balance. Yes, they're very present. And the ones who aren't like so that's why I say the peacemaker is involved because there's a lot of balance going on there. Mm -hmm. And the pawns kind of like hunched up and you know I couldn't see really how the feet were. But the, it just doesn't come across like I'm mentally or emotionally balanced and it'll right. show up in the, in the feet. So that even when the Arab goes and tries to sniff the wood and be calm, there's something in him that's still kind of like, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I think we're sure. But my in. favorite in that show is the protector. He's just like, guys, this is the way life is. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe when the mini jumps on him? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> It was and there is this <coughs> common, you know, and the thing that the reason why we brought got this video brought in is because there was um, the owner thought that the Arab was actually being a bully. Oh. And so it's really fascinating to define the roles as we've done and see how everyone else is trying to ask him to please settle down, stop running around being crazy, playing with those babies. Like it's basically it's a herd management all right. day every day and so we were like no he's you know trying to be managed by these elders as you can see and then in the long run it might be nice to settle the herd a little bit by separating the babies and that arab so that these elders don't have to be babysitting all day every day you know it can be a little exhausting as you can see imagine that's only four minutes right <laughs> <laughs> And at the same time, this is why it's important for youthful children to have groups like in Kentucky when they, you know, they wean the thoroughbred babies, they were all out in a herd so they could all go run and play and all get because children have that kind of energy, they need to use it right that's how they develop is through movement so it's important for them to move. Um, and so there's that balance between keeping everybody quiet and safe. You know, like the adults trying to have a conversation in the room while the kids are playing and disturbing the adults, but the kids need to play. So right. it's really finding that balance between the two, two sort of populations. Mm -hmm. um, um, but, you know, I, I so often remember how they would put like a lead mayor, a, a mayor with the young guy, kids to kind of just have somebody kind of keeping the roles in place and, and um, um, somebody was saying it's a lot like um, they've seen it with monkeys in Japan. And, you know, I think that this kind of thing, a uh, high buster, mm -hmm. you can be on TV because you have insisted this one's oh, oh, wow, wow. This Buster. Buster our, is our devil kitty. <laughs> he's the one that's always like making noise and he's trying to tell me it's time for lunch. Um, <laughs> so, um, but you know, like in, with elephants, if they, if the mother gets killed or they lose the matriarch, the teenagers go wild and they do bad things, mm -hmm. right? Right. So it seems that this sort of management of youth is a common theme of having role models, but at the same time, they need to have play models. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that someone did ask, um, would the pond be different without kids? Yes, the pond would be less inclined to just hide in a corner. I'm thinking he's like the grumpy old uncle. Yes. 
you know, I don't like these kids. It's too much activity. I can't watch my football game. You know, they're making too much noise. <laughs> I just want my cigar and my bag of popcorn. And <laughs> but for, you know, for our purposes, watching the specific messages that the different horses gave, like the protector horse always came in and said like protector messages, girth message, you need to be with us, mm -hmm. right? And and holding messages and, and messages of like, be, you need to be connected. And the teacher came in and said, you need to sit down. You need to match steps. With, All right, I know you need energy. Mm -hmm. Come with me, let's practice movement. Let's do, do, do. And he gave bridge of the nose and sit down messages back to back to back, like yeah. you settle yourself. So that's good for us to know because when the protector gave the um, safety messages, jump up button, girth button, um, connection on the cheek, the, the Arab dropped his head. When the mentor gave, okay, we're gonna do quiet things at the, at the log messages, he liked that too. He's like, I could do that, I could try that. And then when the teacher's like, all right, I'm gonna drive you around and we're gonna practice stuff. That's where the Arab got like, uh, bored now. <laughs> So, so if I was working with him, I would do, I would do holding the sit button too. And I would do bridge of the nose for a little bit of backward movement, not necessarily even backing up, but just sort of rocking him to yep. get him, to get him more grounded. And probably bridge of the nose and the follow me button where the strap of the halter goes behind the ears. Mm -hmm. Also, that's a for a relaxation nice, and, yeah. you know, just refocusing his mind. But since the teacher gave so much sit down, I would say, ah, that's probably something this horse really needs. And that's the cool thing about knowing about the buttons and understanding what each button means and the inflection, because watching a video such as this, it's just a great coaching tool for us to be like, huh. And we actually had that in a private session on Saturday where we watched, we were working with this horse and then the two horses got back together. And it, again, it was actually the bridge of the nose. It was um, a stallion and an ex stallion. And the stallion was saying bridge of the nose to the ex stallion bridge of the nose and then sharon's like okay so uh the stallion just told us what we need to do so we should follow his lead and, and it and it was perfect it was it yeah. was absolutely stunning it's really great so it's it's really really amazing to see their coaching and follow along on the other side sometimes we can come into a situation like this where the horses are fed up and they're like i don't know what else to do and you can offer a message they hadn't thought of and i've had the mentors look at me and go I didn't think of that and come in and start doing the same message. <laughs> it's so cool, really cool. That was a fabulous video. I want to thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think that 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 it's such a complete story. You can really mm -hmm. see because there's repeating in it, right? You can right. see it happen and then you can see it happen again because the Arab doesn't quite accept the message, but that's that's when you that really helps. Sometimes when it's just once, you're kind of like, did I see that? Was that right? But this one is, let's do this again. Let Nope, you've got to do this again. So it really just kind of reinforces it. It's fabulous. Whoever filmed that, tell them thank you so much. And thank you for sharing yeah. that with us today, because that was just, just terrific. Now, my question to you, Wendy, is does this contextualize the video of your horses at the beginning? Yes, it does help a lot. And it, it <coughs> makes me realize that, you know, well, what I know with Dunny is I have to tell him the same messages over and over and over. And so, and it just made me realize she has to tell him the same message over and over and over because Dunny just doesn't quite, what's the word for it? Accept the message, comply with the message, right. mm -hmm. acknowledge the message. He's always kind of pushy, pushy, you know? And so I have to keep saying it. And then all of a sudden I'll see something like, um, like we we struggled with him to stand quietly at the mounting block and it took me too much. And then all of a sudden now he just stands. And I was like, when did that happen? Suddenly it just happened like his halter. I mean, when I first took him over, he was being let in with a chain. And so we had to do put your head down and accept your halter and no, you can't invade my space. And now he puts his head in the halter. Whereas before it was a wrestling match, but I don't know when it when it finally clicked and I actually had Laura will uh, Laura Plunkett talk to him and she said he was quite unique. <laughs> she hadn't yeah. talked to him quite like Dunny, but there is this like she called it ADD. He needs the message repeated over and over and over and over. And then sometimes it comes through and gets locked in. 
but right. I'm not sure that that's entirely true in the herd. And that's why kid always has to just repeat. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, because people will ask me like, well, would this happen in a natural setting? I think in, in nature, you've got a herd of 10 to 20 horses mostly. That's the average kind of herd size. And you've got enough personalities. They're also moving and they're going somewhere. They're not, in, they're not stuck in one paddock repeating the same, you know, there's not hay in the middle of it. And so the, the situation, the chessboard is totally different. And I think in that context a joker who's constantly poking at people, making sure they are who they say they are, makes sense because it actually encourages integrity, mm. right? Because that joker is going to go around and be like, do you still have a bubble? Yeah, I do. Okay, next. Do you have a bubble? Yeah, I do. Okay, do you have a bubble? And that's their job. And in that setting, it makes sense. But in a, in an enclosed environment where there's there's nothing else to do, nowhere to go, they're just like, <laughs> like there's just no. Yeah, and somebody thought his go away button is broken. It's not broken. It, you just need to be clear about it and repeat it. I mean, it's just, he is constantly testing that bubble. Um, and um, that is, I mean, he's been on the farm for 13 years. That's how he was when he came. And while it is better, it is who he is. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I know um, Heidi Potter had this horse that uh, was living at her house, who was the quintessential joker. And she found the perfect, perfect home for him with someone that just wanted to bang around in the woods and just go, I think they're maybe doing some endurance riding. And she, the woman who took him got rid of fencing pretty quickly because there was no point. He wasn't going to stay in anyway, but he wasn't going to leave either because he loved being there. And I think that he's got some goats and some donkeys and some friends. And she sent a picture of him out back in the kiddie pool. He just <laughs> crawled in the kiddie pool and he's like, hi. <laughs> but they get along with him. Great. She rides. He just goes off into the woods and they have a good time. Like if you tried to do serious work with him, he'd be like, I no. can't, I'm going to lose my mind. So it's, it's also important, I think, sometimes to know what we're attracted to and why, like, you know, what what we draw to ourselves could be a mirror image of us or could be like total opposite. So it's like, why am I drawn to this horse? Yeah. Well, he, he's, his mom died and was Joyce's mom. Mm. Um, but she never, she did, she wasn't good at setting boundaries. So he hasn't had clear boundaries for a long time, but you know, like mm. I said, he is improving. It's just a different, trajectory with Dunny than it is with other horses. But the more you explained, yes, Buster, um, how he was, how kid has to constantly reinforce, it just shows me that is the way it is. You just have to reinforce. It's true. And I, and I think you're, the way your attitude is perfect because you have, he just makes you laugh and he's not trying to hurt anybody. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Nope. All right, well, I have to go let Buster out. So I think we need to bring this to a close because if I yes, don't, he's just- are at an hour already yeah um thanks everybody for joining us just remember to go out to horseclass.com so you can sign up for the free effortless rider workshop that's on now it's gonna it's only for a limited time so you need to go now and thank you guys and we'll be in touch to uh figure out this weekend yes. and to schedule you for another webinar this was yeah. fantastic thank yeah. you so much and you can find out all about our stuff at sharonwilsey.com so yes. we'll see and your new time. book should be out we don't know because it's still actually in our possession. It's supposed to be out in May, but I don't know if that will actually, I can't. It'll be out soon. soon. It'll be out soon. I know the feeling I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for spending some time with us. We'll see you all again. Yep. Bye. Take care. <laughs>